The Ford Focus replaced the Ford Escort in 1998, signalling the end of the Escort namesake and introducing the public to a sharp new silhouette for Europe's favourite family car. Between 1968 and 1998, the Ford Escort got through six different generations, with the Mark I and Mark II bringing rallying to the masses at the hands of Roger Clark, Timo Mackinnon and Ari Vatanen. In 1980, we ditched the elegant Coke bottle styling of the 60s and 70s and went for the straight lines and square edges of the Mark III. The Mark II Escort had effectively been a repackaged Mark I, but the Mark III was an entirely new vehicle. Available from launch in 1980 was the XR3, a sporting model aimed squarely at the Golf GTI, which had launched four years earlier in 1976. With a twin choke Weber carb, uprated suspension and that iconic black rubberized trim and spoiler, it was a hit. Not just with customers, with car thieves. More on that later. In 1982, the hot hatch got a little hotter with the arrival of fuel injection and the XR3i but none were as desirable as the RS 1600i, punching out a mighty 115 horses, which would be surpassed with the arrival of the first generation RS Turbo with its 130-ish brake horsepower arriving in 1984. The fourth generation Ford Escort was a facelift Mark III, which gave us a better looking XR3i and of course, the legendary second generation RS Turbo. A decade after its launch in 1980, the squared-off Mark III was replaced by the curvaceous Mark V, first appearing in 1990 and bringing with it the only Ford Escort that really matters, in my humble opinion. The RS Cosworth arrived in 1992, a full-blown turbocharged four-wheel drive monster with a whale tail that would define a generation. And if, like me, you were born in the mid-1980s. The chances are the Ford Escort Cosworth was, has been, and always will be, the ultimate in automotive perfection. Ah, this would be a good time to drop in some old photos of me stood next to a couple of cozies. Yes, I used to have curtains. I think that's Ford fair. The Cosworth lost its big turbo for the later models and was curtailed completely in the last production year of 1996, with just under 7,500 cars built. I'm going to dwell on the Escort Cosworth a bit more here because its price rise has been nothing short of meteoric in recent years, and rightly so. A car that brought performance to the masses, a proper blue-collar street rod that fell victim to many mods, many crashes and many thefts. The Cosy was very nickable, very customizable, and very desirable, so it's understandable that good quality examples with low mileage are now making a hundred grand. The death of the Cosworth was a great tragedy for those of us that loved the badge. And this brings us neatly, or nearly, onto the Ford Focus in which I find myself today. The end of the Cosworth wasn't far from the arrival of the facelifted Mark VI Ford Escort, the one that most of us would like to forget. The Mark VI Escort gave us the RS2000 and the GTI, but neither could walk on the hallowed ground that the Cosworth left behind. There was a gap, and it needed to be filled. Two years after the last Escort RS Cosworth was registered, the Escort name was dead, replaced by the all-new, edgy, impressive, beautifully packaged Focus. Signalling a new era in Ford design language, the attractive-looking car immediately won the European Car of the Year award, and the Focus name was cemented into automotive language. Despite the hoo-ha, the sales success and the hype, there was only one question that us Ford aficionados ever had. Will there be a Cosworth? I remember seeing a rendering in probably Fast Forward magazine of an artist's impression of the Focus Cosworth, and although there wasn't a practical way to mount the whale tail, we were all excited by the prospect. Sadly, no Cosworth would materialise. Instead, we had a choice of 1.4, 1.6, 1.8 or 2 litre petrol engines and superb diesels that we don't really need to mention here. In 2002, Ford gave us the RS, a limited production run turbo powered hatchback with 215 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 6.2 seconds. Cue all those jokes about torque steer. But with just 4,500 to go around, this wasn't really a mainstream hot hatch. Remember, there were 7,500 Escort Cosworths, only 4,500 Focus RSs. However, the ST170, now that was the hot hatch for the masses, and the car that's been largely overlooked by the Ford Hungry Investment Brigade 
who are currently driving the prices of the Cosworth far beyond the reach of us mere mortals. The ST170 arrived in 2002 based on a facelifted Mark I Focus and bringing with it some choice design features that, in my opinion, make it one of the greatest looking focuses of all time. Colour coded everything combined with the subtle body kit and half or full leather interior made it a beautiful specification car, whilst that perfect six speed gearbox and 170 horsepower engine made it an absolute hoot to drive. The standard 2-litre petrol engine pushed a measly 120 horsepower, but the ST170 was breathed upon by Cosworth and had such goodies as a high-flow cylinder head, variable valve timing, dual-stage intake manifold, stainless steel exhaust and a sports cat. It also had larger brakes and revised steering. The net result was a hot hatch built onto what has to be one of the greatest handling hatchback platforms of all time. A fun little car built on the Focus platform that Ford spent God knows how much developing. It was a recipe for perfection and the masses lapped it up in droves. And herein lies the problem. A cheap performance Ford has built into its DNA a natural magnetism for the accessories department at Halfords and an unshakable desire to end up on its roof. It's just the way these cars go. Halfords and the max power movement were to the ST170 what Marette headlamps and Azev wheels were to the Escort Cosworth. The survival rate for these cars has been horrendously low. If it's not been hit with the max power stick or a tree, it's fallen prey to the dreaded tin worm rust problems that plague all Fords from this era. Finding a good quality ST170 has gone hard and I challenge you to go and have a look. Fast forwards drop like flies, are stolen like hotcakes and are often neglected and unloved. This example is a rarity because it's a genuine two owner from new car with a service history that any classic enthusiast would envy. What's more, the ST170 was the last of the underpowered fast forwards and I say that with love. Look at your choices for a fast forward in the early 2000s and tell me this isn't peak auto. We have the Focus ST170, the Fiesta ZTEC S and the Mondeo ST220. We had the peppy little 1.6 Fiesta, which, if you haven't driven one, is simply sublime. I've had a few of those and I can't think of a faster car for going to and from my house to work during the time that I owned it. You could have lent me a Ferrari and I'd still have got home quicker in the ZTEC S. The Focus, you can see from this video, is a little more grown up and a little heavier, but it's still got that cheeky small car punch that we've all grown to love. And at the top of the tree, there's the Mondeo ST220, beautifully designed and powered by a meaty V6 engine. What a range that was, what a choice. The early 2000s, brilliant. Don't forget, these aren't supercars. They don't push out oodles of power, but that's the point. I could drive the ZTEC S or this ST170 on the limit, bouncing off the rev limiter virtually everywhere. There's a perfect amount of usable power going through the front wheels, go-kart-esque performance in a beautifully put together package. As time's gone on, we're told things need to get better and better, but cars haven't necessarily done this. The second generation Focus arrived in 2004, growing in weight and girth and stature, but losing some of the elegance of the first one. 2005 gave us the Focus ST, bringing with it a 225 horsepower equipped engine from Volvo, it was a T5 engine, and it had a whole new character. It feels completely different to an ST170. They are worlds apart, but something had been lost. The ASBO, as Clarkson liked to call it, was an entirely different sort of fast forward and it heralded the arrival of the stupid performance hatchback lunatic movement. The latest Focus RS from 2022 packs 350 horsepower and can usually be found chasing Mercedes A45 AMGs or Audi RS3s or hot BMW 1 series, but it's all gotten too much. The roads are worse than ever, the traffic is horrendous, the price of fuel is quite frankly a joke and worthy of another video on its own, and things just seem to have gone a bit backwards. The reason people buy classic cars is to hark back to a better time, a time in their youth where the world seemed to stretch out in front of you, full of possibilities and options and hope. Not like the generation we have today, who seem to be faced with a future of doubt, debt and death. This Ford Focus ST170 is a bit of a unicorn in terms of its history and condition, but the Focus ST170 in any order is well worth buying, rescuing and restoring. These are cars from a time gone by, the last of the simple hot hatchbacks and a true performance Ford for the masses. 
As a great handling, fun to drive car, it ticks all the boxes. It's hugely popular, universally loved, and finding its way in the classic car world as a respected member in the history of the fast Ford. I can highly recommend that you go and find one. Unfortunately, this one is not for sale. Thanks for watching. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.